Hi, I am Dr. Sakya Mansoor and today I will discuss with you the fracture of the distal end of the radius, the Coley's fracture where the distal end of the radius gets dorsally and laterally displaced and producing a dinner fork deformity. So let's move on. It's a definition of the Coley's fracture. It's a common extension compression fracture of the distal radius that produces a typical dinner fork deformity. It is a common fracture in the adults over 50 years of age and takes place more often in females due to weakness of bones caused by a post-menopausal osteoporosis. It's a complete transverse fracture of distal 2 cm of radius called a Coley's fracture. It is the commonest fracture of forearm. Distal fragment gets displaced dorsally and it is frequently broken into pieces that is comminuted. Fracture is due to forced extension of the hand, commonly as a result of an effort to ease a fall by outstretching upper limb. So this is a very catchy point. That is the fall on the outstretched hand. This is commonly result from that. Here you could see this. This is actually is trying to ease down uh, the fall and uh, the fracture gets um uh, here in the distal end of the radius this this is due to the transmission of force from uh, here from the um, thenar eminence to the radius and uh, that goes to the ulna humerus and the clavicle ultimately and this is the dinner fork deformity here you could see this is the radius and this is the distal end of the radius it, it is broken it's a transverse fracture and uh, this resembles the four the fork. Yes, this is the dinner fork deformity. So frequently, ulnar stylet process gets evolves as the broken off. In normal condition, radial stylet process projects further distally than ulnar stylet process. As a result, when a Coley's fracture takes place, this relationship gets reversed due to shortening of the radius. Here you could see this. This is a. This is the uh, you know, uh, normal list. This this is the normal list. You could see this. This is the uh, stylet process of the radius. This is the stylet process of the ulna. And the uh, stylet process of the radius projects distally than this that of the ulna. You could see it. this is a fall on the outstretched hand that will result in the police fracture. And here you could see this is a palm of view. So you, you could see. Now that relationship, which was that this uh, stylet process for the radius is no more projecting distally than that of the ulna, right? So there you could see there is a dinner fork deformity and the distal segment of the radius overrides the rest of the bone. So that is again, you see, listen, the fracture is often called as a dinner fork deformity because the posterior angulation takes place in the forearm just proximal to the wrist and normal anterior curvature of the relaxed hand. The posterior bending occurs by posterior displacement and the tilt of the distal fragment of the radius. I told you this discussion of the this uh, figure is complete. So, typical history of the patient with the Coley's fracture involves slipping or tripping and as an attempt to break fall, landing on outstretched limb with forearm and hand in pronation. This outstretched limb with forearm and hand in pronation. Due to bridge blood supply of the distal end of the radius, bony union is often good. As the distal end of radius gets fractured in the children, fracture line can extend through distal epiphyseal plate. These epiphyseal plate injuries are commoner in the older children due to their frequent falls where for forces are transmitted from hand to the radius and the ulna. The healing process may result in the malalignment of epiphyseal plane and the disturbance in radial growth. Let's have a few words about the Smith's fracture, which is a reversed Coley's fracture. Smith's fracture is a fracture of the distal end of the radius and takes place as a result of a fall on the back of the hand. Here you could see this is was a Coley's fracture. This is a dinner fork deformity, and this is a Smith's fracture. This is the reverse Coley's fracture. This is um, 
the reverse of that uh, fracture. This at uh, here you could see again that focus on that that the distal end of the radius is getting dorsally displaced, and here the distal end of the radius gets uh, ventrally or anteriorly displaced. So fall on the outstretched hand. Uh, here for forces gets transmitted from scaphoid to the distal end of the radius, from the radius across introsious membrane to the ulna, and from ulna to the humerus. Then through the glenoid fossa of the scapula to the cracoclavicular ligament and clavicle, and in the end to the sternum. In these forces are enormous. If 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 the forces are enormous, different portions of the upper limb yield under the strain. The area involved looks to be related to the age of the person. So the age phase distribution is the fall on the outstretched hand. Obviously, this is on the palmar aspect and the dorsal aspect fall on the leading to Smith's fracture. The commonest of all the fractures here is the police fracture. Again, to reiterate that. In a younger child, fall on the outstretched hand leads to um, posterior displacement of the distal radial epiphysis. In a teenager, the clavicle can fracture. In a young adult, scaphoid is usually fractured. In the elderly, distal end of the radius gets fractured about 2 cm proximal to the wrist. This is a police fracture. And the topic under discussion today. And in the end, you see the radiographs as well. This is the Coley's fracture. Here you could see this is the soft tissue injury. Here you could the soft tissue. And uh, this is the, um, you could see dar dorsal displacement. And this is the radiograph. Here you could see the uh, dorsal segment displaced dorsally. Distal segment placed dorsally. And this is the Smith's fracture. Here you could see. This is the anterior displacement of the broken segment. So this is the complete study with the discussion. So and for this time, for an, your interest uh, of the learners, I have included an MCQ here. So let's see. Uh, a 62 years old lady presents after a fall that caused uh, and resulted a painful deformity of her wrist. There is posterior and lateral displacement of the distal wrist and hand. What is the likely diagnosis? A Bennett's fracture, Box's fracture, Collis fracture, fracture of the distal ulna, or the scaphoid fracture? So the answer you will uh, give me in the comments, and we, we can uh, discuss there what could be the probable answer of that. So thank you very much for being tuned in, and stay tuned, and for support. If you like my channel, do subscribe. Thank you very much.